the way we design our cities is really important. Our cities before the 1940s were primarily focused on being walkable. But in the 1920s and 30s, we started designing our cities around cars. This has led to all sorts of different problems, a decline in housing affordability and displacement of communities as our cities were centered around cars instead of around us. And we wanted to bring that back. My name is Karen Perolik, and I'm co-founder and president of Opticos Design. My partner, Dan Perolik, and I founded Opticos in 2000. We are an architecture and urban design firm that focuses on walkable, sustainable, equitable community design. Cities are complicated. And so as we've gone back and looked at how do we actually build walkable communities, we've found that the zoning is actually a problem. Everyone loves a corner store. Upstairs, the proprietor would live. Their commute was just walk down the stairs, but our zoning prohibits that because our zoning says you have to live in one area and you have to work or have a store in a different area. One of the other things that zoning did is separates different housing types. Over 90% of our land in the United States is zoned where you can only build a detached single family home. And what we realized when we started looking at our historic walkable towns is that they're full of all of these other building choices. And so we started talking about bringing these building types back and we created a concept called missing middle housing. Missing middle housing, they look like a single family home, but they actually have multiple units in them and they're generally supporting walkable neighborhoods. So the idea is that we're housing more people in our neighborhoods that actually supports local businesses, it supports our schools, it actually makes transit more possible in a way that still looks and feels like our walkable, tree-lined boulevard you know, communities. And so it provides a variety of housing choices at a lower price point, bringing more people together into community. As part of the B Corp community, one of the things that they talk about you can do is finding better banking. So we started looking around for banks to bank with, and in that community we found Beneficial State Bank. Two years ago when the pandemic started was really scary for small businesses like ours. We were worried about what was going to happen to our people. When the PPP loans were offered by the federal government, the big banks were focused on the biggest loans that they could come by. So for small businesses, we weren't sure how we were gonna get access to those funds. And Beneficial State Bank really stepped in. They created an entire system that made it easy to apply. They um, answered our questions. They always picked up the phone. They were really transparent with us about what the process was looking like. And they were being thoughtful about who they were putting at the front of the line to process their loans and how they were prioritizing those people. And I really appreciated that thought. And how often do you have, find a bank that's being thoughtful about those sorts of things? We know that when we leave our money in the bank while we're not using it, that they're gonna put it to good use, supporting the same communities that we're out working in every day. I love that Beneficial State Bank is really focused on supporting small businesses and people aligning their money with their values. We do that as we take our passion out into the world to support communities, to bring what we can to the conversation about community and how to make communities better. People going out and finding their job that they're passionate about, starting their own businesses, and that Beneficial State Bank is there to support them means the world, and we want that for, for everyone. <laughs>